Okay everyone, it's been a while since we've uh, done one of these videos. Um, my system has not expanded that much since the last time we spoke, but um, there is one new module that I'd like to talk to you about, and that is the Synthesizer.com Q107 State Variable Filter. Um, filtering is the basis of subtractive synthesis, which is the most common type of synthesis that people engage in with, um, with uh, modular analogs. And basically the idea behind synthesis is that you have a, um, a complex wave which has a lot of harmonic content, there's all kinds of interesting things, and you are going to shape that sound by removing components of the, f of the frequency spectrum. That's essentially, the, that's essentially it. So I've sequenced up a sound for us to work with, and uh, here I'll let you hear it. This is a pretty basic patch. We've got two oscillators putting out sawtooth waves one octave apart, um, and uh, then I've got the computer running a little sequence for us. As you can hear, this sound has, um, uh, you know, an interesting bit of character to it um, that we can work with. Sawtooth waves are kind of nice for that. Uh, sine waves don't uh, respond as well to filters because there's not that many harmonics to filter out. Um, anyway, um, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to uh, root our sound through the filter. So my last stage in my patch is this one right next to the filter, and this um, signal input is coming from the mixer, which is uh, where the two oscillators are going to. And instead of having that go into the amplifier and then out to the computer, we are going to take that out and stick it into the signal inputs on the filter. Um, and then, of course, we have to get that signal back out of the filter, so we are going to jack it into one of these four output jacks and back into the signal input where it was before. So we've basically just taken our sound and rooted it through the filter. And so far, this doesn't sound really any different. Um, the key thing to know about how the filter works is best seen if you look at the, four, the labels on the four output jacks. They are high pass, band pass, notch, and low pass, and they have little diagrams there to show you what's going on. So with high pass, we're going to be removing the uh, low frequencies and letting the high frequencies through. With band pass, we will be just letting through a very small band of frequencies. With notch, we'll be letting through all the frequencies except for a small band of them. And with low pass, which is probably the most commonly used one, uh, we will be letting through the low frequencies and removing the high frequencies. So right now we're patched into the low pass. And as we heard, it doesn't sound much different. The reason for that is that the uh, frequency is set all the way open. That's this knob here, and this controls the frequency threshold of the, of the filter. If I, if I turn it back, you'll be able to hear the effect on the sound as it starts to cut out more and more of the high frequencies. By now, we're past the range where our sound is doing anything interesting, so um, you don't hear much of anything. But through here, you can hear it gradually as we turn it back up letting more and more of the high frequencies through. Just to give a quick view of the other modes, here's high pass. As we pull out, as we turn our knob, you'll be able to hear the, the high frequencies start to dominate the sound. We get this reedy sound. Very thin. I don't know if this camera will pick all that up. Band pass. This is about where our sound's band starts. And so as I move it, you'll just be hearing that specific band of frequencies. This has a very thin sound, but it's very targeted. So um, it can be nice if you want something to slip right into a, a narrow area of the mix. Notch, 
doesn't sound like much for most of the sound spectrum, but when you get into some of the areas where there are a lot of interesting harmonics that strongly shape the sound, you can create this neat sort of hollow tone to the sound. You mostly hear it through this range. It's the same sound, more or less, but it's got sort of a hollowness to it. So let's go back to the low pass. So this allows us to do some nice shaping. I mean, if we put it to about here, we've got essentially our same sound, but it's it's mellower. It's um, you know it's got it's had some of the bite taken out of it. Uh, and this is you know a common use for uh, a common utility use for filters. The thing which makes filters even more interesting is is when they have resonance. This knob here is the resonance knob. See, it's labeled resonance cross top. I turned it down earlier. I, I meant to have it off at the beginning. Resonance basically emphasizes the frequencies right around the threshold. So right at the point we're going to cut off, we're going to boost those frequencies. If I turn the resonance up and then bring it down, here you can really do a lot of shaping of the sound by emphasizing that short band but leaving everything else in place. It really affects this, the character of the sound. So that's a, that's a significant amount of shaping that you can do. Now, if I sit here and fiddle with the knob, I'm sure you'll be getting some deja vu. And that's because this, this technique, which is called the filter sweep, was very popular, especially in the 80s or early 90s in electronica. So what we are going to do is make that a part of our sound. And how we do this is to use an oscillator. You'll see I have a third oscillator here. This knob here is controlling the pitch of the oscillator, the frequency of the oscillator. And this last position is low frequency oscillator mode, where it oscillates slowly enough that you can see it. You can see the lamp here turning on and off. That's the rate at which it's currently oscillating. If we take a sine shape, which is a nice smooth curve, from that oscillator at that rate and hand it into the frequency of our filter, then we put the filter somewhere near the beginning of the useful range and tell the, and tell the system to add that oscillator's voltage to the frequency then you can hear that filter sweep happening. If we put it further into the useful range and turn down the amount, you just get this sort of nice subtle movement to your sound. And what you're hearing mostly is the, the resonance band moving across the, uh, the sound. And as you change the frequency of the oscillator, you can actually make it do that rhythmically uh, for an interesting effect in your song. Or if you make it do it fast enough, you could modify the sound in interesting ways. On the other end of the spectrum, if you make